everyone, this is the video on Unit 5 Concentration. It's the last video in this unit, and it's probably one of the more important ones. Um, here we're going to be looking at the molarity of a solute. We're going to be looking at concentration. How do you know how concentrated something is? How do you know how to dilute something? And what does that dilution really mean? So we are just right here. Now, when we talked about solutions, like aqueous solutions, what's soluble, what's not, last unit, we never got into solubility itself, and specifically what concentration of, of solute could be there. So when we're talking about a solution, it's just a homogeneous mixture of something mixed in water. And so the solute is whatever is dissolved. It's there in the smaller amount. So like if you have salt water, it's the salt. The solute is the salt. If you And the solvent is the thing that is doing the dissolving. For our purposes, that's going to be water. It's the thing that's there in the larger amount. Okay. Now what we really care about is concentration, which means how much of solute is dissolved per amount of solution. Okay. Um, this is super important for a lot of things. You know, we could get into your water quality reports that the state is supposed to provide you every year. Uh, we could get into, you know, how do you know uh, what concentration of vitamins are in a, you know, tablet? How do you know that they're, you know, all kinds of things. In fact, there was an article not too long ago of how much arsenic was present in apple juice. I think I have it in the scientific method. Uh, pause, pause, pause. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's pause. Okay, so I think I have that video in the scientific method section. Um, it's just a matter of you want to know how concentrated something is and how to handle that. Okay? Now for our purposes, um, now there's a ton of concentration units. We could talk about molarity, molality, mass fraction, weight percent, all kinds of things. Um, but for our purposes, we're only going to deal with molarity. It tends to be the one that is most common. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just most common. So molarity is the amount of moles of your solute dissolved per liter of a solution. So um, actually, we haven't done that, so I'm going to change this to 0 0.6 liters. So calculate the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 25 grams of NaCl into uh, 0 0.625 liters. So molarity is equal to moles per liter. So we want to have moles of NaCl per liter of solution. Well, we have 25 grams and we have 0 0.625 liters. So we have the liters. We do not have moles. How do you go from grams to moles? Molar mass! So we need to find the, um, uh, the molar mass of NaCl. So NaCl has Na and Cl. There's 1 and 1, there's 22.99 and 35.45 according to the periodic table. Um, I didn't plan properly, so I'm going to add here. So it's going to be 58.44 grams per mole. So we're going to start with that 25.0 grams. We know that there are 58.44 grams in one mole. And according to the calculator, if we have 25.0 divided by 58.44, we get 0 0.428 moles. So now we have moles. We have our liters. We can plug it in. 0 0.428 divided by 0 0.625.
and you should get something like 0 0.684-ish. Um, this is molar. Capital M means molar or moles per liter either way. Um, NaCl. How many grams of NaCl are in 20, uh, 0.25 liters of 1.2 molar? So here we have 1.2 molar which is the same as moles of NaCl per liter. We are given liters and we're looking for grams. Well, we can't go from grams to liters, liters to grams, we don't know that. But we can go from liters to moles using molarity because this is really saying that there's 1.2 moles equal to one liter. So we're gonna use molarity as a conversion factor here. And then from moles we can get to grams using our molar mass. So here we've got two arrows, so we need two columns. We're going to start with that given 0 0.25 liters. I'm using the, the one number. I'm not using something that's got more units here. This is a moles and liters here. So that's how I know not to start there. Now we know every time we have one liter of solution, we have 1.2 moles. And every time we have one mole, according to the last slide, we have 58.44 grams. So liters is canceled, moles of NaCl is canceled, we're left with grams of NaCl. So we have 0 0.25 times 1.2 times 58.44, and we end up getting something like 17.5 grams of NaCl. Now the other thing that can come in handy is for concentration. It, for concentration is dilutions, I'm sorry. So dilutions are where you take something that is really concentrated and you dilute it down. Um, this happens <clears throat> a lot of the time in um, you know if you have like a really concentrated cleaning solution, you could add it to a, a bottle and add some water, diluting it down a little bit. You can also, um, if you've ever gone to get sweet tea at like Chick-fil-A or uh, Pollard's, um, their sweet tea is really just syrup. And so what a lot of the time you can do is you can get unsweet tea or water and dilute it down so that the sugar <laughs> is a little less concentrated. Now. This is also kind of important um, because you have to know the exact concentration of things that, that might happen. So like in, um, in nursing, if you go to the hospital and you need an IV, that IV solution has to have the exact amount of uh, salt there so that your blood vessels don't burst. Too concentrated and they kind of shrivel and you become dehydrated, too much uh, and too much salt, that's what happens. Too little salt, and what will happen is your blood cells will actually expand from osmotic pressure and burst. Same thing happens with things like um, people that take too much medication. They, they misread the amount or it's more concentrated. Um, toddler medication was reformatted a couple of years ago, so the concentrations really changed and the numbers, the math ended up getting a little bit more complicated. You know, even things like baby formula, you know, or, and uh, other supplements. If you end up diluting that down too much, it's incredibly hazardous. They have to have just the right amount, just the right concentration of everything, or it's incredibly dangerous. So, anyway, the way that we dilute is we have the molarity and volume of one situation equal to the molarity and the volume of a new situation. And we just multiply. Now because we are, you know, keeping the, we're just adding water in, what's really only changing is the volume. The, the, the mole stays constant, which is why this works. So it doesn't matter what volume you have, if it's milliliters, liters, or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. It's going to work out fine. So here we have a two molar Na, 
NaOH solution. And we're going to try and make 50 mils of a 0.1 molar solution. So what I typically do is I make my table because you guys know I, I can't stand disorganization. So we have two molar. Uh, we don't know how much we're going to need of that. And 50 mils of this. So that's how you know that those go together. This of that. Now, we have three of the four, so we can go ahead and plug it in. M1, V1 is equal to M2, V2. 2.0 times V is equal to 0 0.1 times 50. Now, this is molar, this is molar, and so what we can do is, I typically like cleaner math, but you don't have to if you don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and solve. So this gives me 2.0 molar times V is equal to 5.0, and this is molar times milliliters. All right, so I'm going to divide both sides by this 2 molar, and volume is now going to be 5.0 molar milliliters over 2.0 molar that goes away. 5 divided by 2, you, en you end up getting 2.5. Because this is the only unit that's left, it's milliliters. If it was liters, it would be liters. So the whole point is your volume is going to be the same as what you, whatever unit you started with, okay? Um, try not to get too bogged down with did we use milliliters or liters there. A student needs to make 250 milliliters of a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution. How much of a 4.1 molar HCl solution would they need? MV, 1 and 2. Uh, 4.1 molar. Don't know that. 250 milliliters of 0.1. So M1V1 is equal to M2V2, 4.10 times V is equal to 0 0.1 times 250. 4.10V is equal to 25. The molarities are going to cancel. We're going to divide both sides by 4.10. And you end up getting volume is equal to 6.09, I'll say 6.1 uh, milliliters. Okay? So in this unit, we've talked about how to find the atomic mass. We've calculated the molar mass. We've used molar mass to go between grams and moles. We used Avogadro's number to go between uh, moles in either molecules or atoms. We've calculated the percent composition. We've done some stoichiometry and we've dealt with concentration. So we've really addressed a lot of mathematical concepts here, um, but let me know if you have any questions.